to Endpoint Office Hours. We are joined by Senior Product Manager Carlos Diaz to talk about the Windows Store for Education and some updates. Hey everyone, and pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the invite. Yep, if everyone will go on mute really quick and Carlos, take it away. Hi everyone, pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invite, guys. Um, today I wanted to talk real quick uh, and just give you a quick briefing on the uh, the store and the changes that have happened, um, changes that are coming very, very soon. Uh, and I really just want to make sure that the community is aware so that nobody is caught off guard, um, especially at the beginning of schools, because um, this the ne this next change will be happening very, very soon. Um, and I am also going to post a, a, a video, a YouTube video uh, that my team has done um, that talks about the store and, and gives some uh, advice on how to make these changes and how to migrate things over. Um, but real quick, for those that are not aware, the uh, the store for education slash store for business has been deprecated. It is no longer connected to Intune, and, it, and that means applications that were originally purchased or quote unquote purchased or assigned from the store for education or store for business uh, will no longer work inside of Intune. Uh, what that means for you right now. Um, so we've already gone gone past a couple of the dates. Um, April 30th, we disconnected uh, Intune from the store for business, but the applications were still visible and still were pushing. Uh, as of June 15th, uh, applications stopped being able to be um, downloaded from the store for business. So you were they were still pushing and they were still able to um, be installed from Intune. But coming up on April, on September 15th, those applications that are still there that were originally coming from the store for business will be deleted from your Intune's console. So you'll no longer have access to push those applications, um, manage the applications, uh, see the assignments to the applications. And this is this is one of the most important things going forward. Um, you know, we really intended and, and we were trying to communicate as often as possible uh, for people to migrate to the new store. The new store experience will allow you to not only have access to uh, many of the same applications that were in the business store, but we now have access to um, a lot of uh, uh, Win32 applications that were um, assigned by the uh, software providers. Um, so it's a lot less packaging, hopefully, for, um, for our customers. Things like um, Adobe have added uh, the uh, CS suite uh, main install main installation as part of the store. So there's a lot, a lot of stuff you, you should be going out and exploring. Um, what we want to do and what we what we've done in, in the on the Intune side of the house is to try to make it a little easier. Is we've um, allowed you to now delete applications directly from Intune that were originally assigned um, from the store. So the uh, the current um, recommendation is for you to have both screens up, and you'll see this in the video that I posted. Have your um, your old assignment and the new assignment side by side, so that you can migrate over the assignments and then delete the old one. Uh, I obviously know that there um, are customers that may have dozens, if not hundreds, of these applications out there. Um, so please, please, please. Uh, Try to get this stuff migrated before September 15th, so that you're not you're not caught uh, with a bad user experience. Um, with that, uh, we've also, in, in case folks don't know, uh, we've also deprecated the private store. Um, so uh, anybody that was using the private store before to assign applications, that all went with the uh, education and business store. So inside of uh, Windows 10, the, the private store no longer works. And uh, actually, the private store is not in Windows 11 either. Um, now, it doesn't mean that you don't, you won't still use the private store uh, setting within uh, Intune. That will still have the same effect of disabling the store um, in general for the users. Are there any, are there any questions on the store? That's really all I have. Well, they did a good job of explaining it. You did an excellent job, Carlos, but I do have a question. Go ahead. So, uh, Garrett, you had actually shared a link internally to us around the common store policy settings and their impact on Microsoft Store apps. There's a new policy that we introduced, right? Yep, like last month. Right. So, 
Carlos, I don't know if you if I'm going to put you on the spot here. But Uh-oh. this that's what office hours is all about, guys. Stump I'm, the I'm chump. all for stump the chum. Oh. So there's a link in the chat. And this is the new because this is something that can get confusing for people um, is. We've got this new store app experience, but we want to block Winget, right? Because we don't want either students or other folks for to install things via Winget through the command prompt. And mm-hmm. so we have all these policies that people have been using historically to block us to the store. But if I do that, um, I could run into situations where Winget doesn't work. And if Winget doesn't work, when the new store app tries to install through the Intune management extension, there's you know, there's an API call to Winget that can actually break that. So the guidance that we have here, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, do we have any like what was what was the new policy that was announced, Garrett? Did we? Because I haven't actually looked at it, so I'm not sure which one of these is new. Um, so if I and let me actually pull this up and share my screen so everyone knows what we're talking about. Um, it is about disabling the consumer experience portion of the store and then preventing a uh, winget from running but then also ensuring that if you have any um, in-house apps inside of windows that are updated by microsoft update that those can still get updated so it's kind of this conglomeration of making sure the policies are doing what you want them to do and getting the experience that you want again new that's why i shared it internally because i haven't even tested the exact experience that we want yet um but i think it's going to be a, a a balance of ensuring that you get the experience that you want because to your point richard if you're pushing this through the ime right it, it may still make that graph call to to win yet but right, that may now, be excluded from that well i think what, what needs to be clear here is that we don't actually use win get like winget.exe, we actually don't use that to do the installation. We use the API to do that. So right. if you were to block winget, like the executable from running, the actual package manager itself, that would not impact the API from being accessed. Um, and correct. I think that's what that's now, what the policy is setting that's new that we introduced within 2307 within Intune. Right, we just exposed it to the settings catalog. Correct. Now, the way that I'm reading this policy, it, it, this the the last feed, the last item on here, turn off store application policy, looks like it does both. It disables the store app and WinGet. Um, I may have to do some more research here and figure out, uh, just make sure that that also doesn't turn off um, the automatic download and install by default uh, as well. So just like a nuke the store type of deal because we don't want uh, you know, obviously, we don't want the end user to be able to get to this stuff, but we want to make sure that uh, in the back end, administrators that are to try and deploy with a new store can still deploy and, and uh, update those apps. Yeah, can everyone see my screen now? Um, yeah. See what I'm referring to? Yeah. So um, under the very last one there. Yeah. Yeah. Turn off the store application altogether. Um, and you'll notice, right, it's this one or two. Um, so to block end users from installing random applications from the store app and Winget exe, set turn off the store application to oh. enabled. To Richard's point, it should it should not disable downloads. Um, and then we call it out right here. API on the other side, yeah. Yep. This so is just blocking Winget itself. Right, this policy doesn't impact the Intunes. The Intunes. <laughs> ability nice. to install Microsoft Store applications. At least the T in Intune. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> or the uh, iTunes ability. ITunes. Yeah. So I think this is the new um, policy here. So for those who haven't tested this, I'd be curious um, in your own environments how this works um, and see if you get the behavior that you want. But I, I suspect yeah. that it's going to be a good thing for our students to ensure that they're not installing those applications through WinGet directly. So Robert asked a question, does it block invoking WinGet uh, from script within Intune Win? I would imagine yes, because you're actually running WinGet from, uh, from the actual device and not just invoking the API. Um, 
I'm assuming that you're you're installing applications, uh, pulling them from Winget through uh, a package to Win into Win. Um, what I would suggest is that you do a search for the application in the new store and see if it exists there instead of um, trying to in install it through the Into Win. Yeah, I think the main reason that you probably would want to do it through Intune and Wayne is if it's from the community repository, not from the mm -hmm. not from the MS store repository. If it's in, if the application you have is in the MS store repository, then it should be much easier to just deploy it through in, through Intune as opposed to repackaging with one. Yeah, and I think Richard, we've talked about that on this at least with this community so far. If you haven't heard us talk about the different repos available within um when get um you know you obviously have the community repository and then the microsoft repository um and then you could even have private repos if i'm not mistaken right richard so um understanding the differences and where that's sourced you can actually go and see inside of intune right those applications are sourced directly from the microsoft repository correct me if i'm wrong richard but it, it, even though it's available in WinGet, it may not be exposed within intune as a new store type app type right um, and so understanding if you go query winget within windows right um, you may be able to find a list of applications that you don't see in intune um, so i think we did talk about this in one of our previously recorded sessions so if you want to know a little bit more about that but but just a heads actually, up that's what we mean by the community actually, MS. Eric, go, go ahead and open up powershell you, you already have it open in the bottom there just go ahead and type in winget <clears throat> Do like While Garrett's doing that, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, just go ahead and type in winget space search. Uh, is it just search like that? Yeah, just search and then Adobe. Yeah. Zoom in for you. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Um, You're going all matrix over here. The heck is that? <laughs> Look at that, seventy two percent. That it's because I've scrolled. I've never seen that either. Yeah, that's uh, because he's right. That's because you're running it in a um, in ISD standard. Yeah, and not we have that. We have some written scripts like that as well. They're supposed to be taking the, the overwriting what was there, but because you're in an ISA window, it doesn't do it. Yeah, yeah. Good just go ahead open up. Okay. Go yeah, it's up. launching. I've got video on and I'm sharing. It's thinking about it. There it oh, there it goes. That's yeah. funny. So that is funny. Um, so you can see right here these sources, right? MS Store versus WinGet repos. Yeah. So so anything that you look for in the new store experience in Intune is going to surface through the MS Store source type. The stuff that says WinGet down below, that stuff's not going to be in Intune when you search the new store app type. Um, and oh, then just whoops. one other decoder ring sort of thing. If you look at the ID column, um, the applications that start with XP, those are Win32 apps. So, all so those, Photoshop and the Acrobat Reader yeah. are Win32 apps, but Adobe Express is a store app. So, so if you were to open up or a, it, a, a UWP app or? Yeah, the, the ones that start with nine, those are all going to be UWP apps. UWP the ones apps. That start with XP are Win32 apps. And then I assume these are your traditional? Yeah, th those are most likely all going to be Win32. Um, yeah. From the community. And so going back to the actual question, like, you know, if, if you're wrapping stuff with Winget, um, I would, if it were me, um, I would do it through, uh, if, if I wanted to go about that way to install apps, um, anything that has the source as Winget, I would, you would have to wrap them if you wanted to install them in that manner. Um, yeah. If they were already exposed to the MS store, then I would I would attempt that first, make sure everything worked the way I wanted it to. And if it did, then cool, I, I don't have to wrap anything. Makes things a little bit easier. And then Carlos, I want to I want to double click just a second on what you talked about when with the retirement. So in a lot of our customers, 
we have previously set up the store for education. We've connected it to Intune. And then once we establish that connection through the store for business, store for education, whatever you want to call it, right, those those apps would automatically populate into the Intune tenant based on our inventory that was acquired with licenses, purchase, et cetera. So what you're saying now is that come retirement date, all of those previously connected apps, those are all going to be removed and disappear out of the Intune tenant 100%, right? So correct. there's no admin action necessary to clean all that up. That is correct. As of sept September yep. 15th, all of that will be deleted. Okay. So that's very clear. Like, make sure one month from today, if you look in your apps, you should see a lot less apps and anything that had that previous store for education app type, it's probably going to be missing or should be missing. Yeah. And how does that affect any, like, apps that are currently assigned in deployments, right? Do we need to go remove um, or clean up? Is there going to be any binaries that are left over that we need to go clean up assignments or anything like that? No, so the one thing okay. to, to take note of is that we are not uninstalling applications from already deployed uh, devices. Any application that's already installed will remain installed unless you okay. Um, okay. do an uninstall today before the, the app is removed from Intune or uh, you'll have to script it later. Um, this is this is going to mainly affect any new deployments going forward or any new installations going forward. But yeah, we're not removing applications from devices. We're not yank, going in there and yanking them out. Um, but you won't be able to install uh, on any newly re-imaged device. The application won't won't be reinstalled. I think the biggest thing that we just need to call out is make sure that you've got acquired the new company portal app type from the new store and make sure that that's targeted to all your devices, whether it be for autopilot or other deployments. I mean, that was. I know we had set up numerous customers with the offline app type for company portal because that made the most sense when deploying for autopilot. Um, and so I know a lot of people are still dependent on that. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and acquire the new um, company portal or from the new app type. It's really not new. It's just a different source. Um, and make sure that that's in your inventory into your apps and then know that in there's now the device context, right? We can actually install this under the user context or the system context. Make sure you have that toggled to the system context for your autopilot deployments. That's really the, the recommended path. That's yeah, the big one that I'm thinking of. There was also a question by, by uh, Dominic. Uh, if using the new store and application updates, will it auto update to the endpoints? Who's responsible for having the latest version in the new store, the vendor or Microsoft. So in that specific case, the vendor is the, at least with Adobe, I can I can speak to that one. The vendor is the one that's responsible for uploading their actual application in the Microsoft store. So we just provide the framework. They The vendor themselves is the one that's actually uploading that application. So as far as actual updates go, you know, the if it's like a Win32 app like Adobe Reader, in that case, then it's going to use the auto update mechanisms already based in the application. So that's actually going to come straight from the uh, vendor itself, in this case, Adobe. And then for UWP apps, they'll go through the same process where they still have a UWP app that they're updating. They'll upload that to the store and then when the mechanism in window, when it checks for store app updates, it will download that. So that's that's the responsibility there. The only time we're ever going to maintain applications is particular is with the NRI and the enterprise app patching or enterprise app catalog that is part of Intune Suite. That's where we'll maintain it. But from the store itself, it's going to be up to the vendor to maintain that. And that's a whole other can of worms. Scott just opened yeah, up a whole exactly. other can of worms. Um, Saul or Saul, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. You've got your hand raised. Feel free to come off mute or throw your question in the chat. Yeah, I had put in my question in there earlier, but <clears throat> it goes back to the device based or system based install for a company portal or any app. When we try when we tested, there was uh, it looks like there was reporting issues um, when doing it on the system context, and it was reported that it was not installed, even though even on device on devices that already had the previous um, company portal app installed via the 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 old Microsoft Store for Business. Has that been fixed, or was it just a 
a reporting error. Trying to, uh, we we went with uh, user based install to not get those errors, but our, our autopilot deployments seem to be delayed in getting the company portal app. Yeah, so I suspect you were probably running into a situation where, well, did you have the company portal app already installed on the machines and then you were converting to the new store app type? Yes. Yeah, so you were probably running into the, the issue that's actually on that same page that we linked about the common store policy settings. If you just look up above where that link takes you to, there's a note box in there saying that assigning a UWP app using the new store app type um, with the installation behavior set as system uh, will actually result in an error. Um, and it gives you the error message and the error code. Um, that was known then. What was interesting after that had come out is actually I was working with a customer, I tested this, and I didn't actually have that error coming up. I don't, so I don't know if it was just, it was working in my environment, but not theirs, or um, if the issue has actually been resolved now, we haven't updated the docs. Um, so I'd suggest maybe trying again, um, because again, like I said, in my, in my environment, things looked good when I had the original company portal that was deployed, um, and then I deployed the new one through the new store app type. Um, again, I never saw that that error message, so I, I don't know if it's fixed. I just know that in my environment, I'm not seeing it. Thank you. And then um, one one other question I had is, uh, <clears throat> for for the apps to show up in the MS the, the Microsoft Store via Intune. Is that something that's dependent on on the vendor or Microsoft? There's there's a few apps that we use for Hololens devices that are available via the Microsoft Store, but I don't see them um, through Intune. Or if I do the Winget uh, command um, that was just showed earlier, it's it's not found there. Yeah, so it is absolutely up to the vendor. Yeah, no, yeah, sorry, so we're, we're yeah, it is up to the vendor. Um, but so you. You ran winget.exe doing a search for the app, and you don't see the application there either. Is that what you're saying? Cor correct. And we used to have them via the Microsoft Store for Business um, before. Okay. Yeah, so what that means is that the vendor hasn't published them. So the, the vendor is the only one that can put them in the MS Store repository in Winget. Um, they're the ones that upload it. They, they upload it. We validate it make sure that it's good and then it's going to be available in Winget, but it'll also be available if they if they make it exposed in the public store, then you would see it there as well. Um, and then for the Winget repository, that's a community repository that anyone could upload to. Even the vendor themselves could just say, you know what, we're going to upload just to there. We don't care about the MS store repository. We'll just put it under Winget. So it's up to whoever wants to upload to upload to that to that separate Winget community repository. But if you're not seeing it in either, then that vendor may not even want to support moving the app. So you might have to go contact them and say, hey, we're still using this app. Can you guys um, move it to the new store experience so that way we can deploy it through Intune? That's a really good question though, Richard. I don't know if you know the answer to this, but we have our AppAssure program, right, for helping with compatibility issues and things like that with the ISVs. Do we know if that if that Aperture program like helps those ISVs help migrate those apps to the new store or is there any kind of incentive there? I don't know if they if they will. Um, OK, generally speaking, that's supposed to be like, hey, the app just doesn't work on Windows 10 or 11. Um, right. This isn't really that type of situation like the yeah. app. We know the app works on the platform. It's supposed to be. Sure. On. Now it's just more of an availability question. Yeah. Um, and if the vendor isn't aware of our changes, um, then that's something that I think their development manager that, you know, the, the, them and us, whoever they contact internally here at Microsoft or from like an ISV support yeah. perspective, they're yeah. just, you know, not communicating, I guess. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. I appreciate the responses. Yeah, no problem. Good questions. Yeah, there was another question that I wanted to address. Um, Jesse asked, do we have a way to force store apps to update via PowerShell or something like that? And unfortunately, at least to my knowledge, we still don't. This has been an active feedback item from my customers and I've got one open. So I threw it in the chat. If you have a strong use case and desire for that capability, I'd like to know. Um, I think I know what the main use case is. Most cases, it's like a vulnerability scanner or something like that in your environment, and it's 
red flagging all these apps that need updates and you're sending that up to leadership and leadership's like, we have all these updates, especially on shared devices where you've got older uh, store apps and in stale profiles and things like that. Obviously you can do some cleanup there, but um, you know, in some research institutions and things like that, that's mm -hmm. not always possible. So um, I've definitely heard the feedback before. So if you have feedback on that, let me know. Um, and I'll get you added to that that feedback item so we we can get some traction on it. But the uh, the one thing I'll caution you guys about that because you you can use WinGet to do a and I've seen customers do this and I've seen customers ask about this. You can use WinGet to um, scan and upgrade all of the apps you have currently installed. Um, I will caution everyone about this because that does not leverage delivery optimization. Um, and it can cause a major issue with your bandwidth. So just please be careful. Anything that's not coming from the uh, MS Store repository does not leverage delivery optimization. Yeah, and and it doesn't, if I'm mistaken, I think in-house apps. So if you have like built-in calculator app and other other things like that, those are flagged in those vulnerability scanners and we can't, we can't update those via command line. Um, if I'm wrong, if someone has a solution, let me know. I'm all ears. That's what this community is about, uh, learning from each other. So um, if you've got something. Oh, yeah, Jesse's commenting. Yep, that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, so so let us know for sure. Um, and and we'll funnel that piece up. Um, what other questions related to the store or when you get anything like that? Kevin's already got it figured out. <clears throat> He's about to deploy it and let us all know how it works. So Kevin, keep us posted. Um, sweet. Well, um, Scott, Richard, do y'all want to just open up to general Q&A or? Oh, wait, we've got one, Robert. So fundamentally, MS considers the Winget repo as, as a private repo and MS is hands off. Uh, I guess. I guess the roundabout way. Well, Robert, what do you mean by hands off? So the MS Store are applications that at Microsoft we have vetted um, and added to the store before. There is some oversight there. It's not we don't just add it and and. Correct. Um, and you know, hope for the best. So those we apps, run through the security MS checks store. and all of that. Yeah, the yep. community though is different. The community apps are coming directly from the community members, directly from the uh, software vendors. Those are not vetted by us. Yeah, pretty much anything that you're going to see inside the Microsoft Store app, like that's been vetted. That's going to be the same thing as the the Winget repo for MS Store. Um, Kevin, this may be a little bit off topic, but what is the preferred way to deploy a Microsoft Store app to a desktop that is managed with SCCM? And what is SCCM? Uh, no co-management, etc. Required install, deploy to machine, not user. Um, I don't. I don't know that there's a preferred way as as long as it meets your use case. I think what I prefer to do is if it's um, if it's managed SCCM, I, well, did we retire? I think we retired the store for business connection or the store for education connection. Right. It's all, that's all right. I did. So I, yeah. I think you'd have to do it through Winget, through a script, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're looking at a, at a solution for SCCM right now, um, but there's no, no real ETA right now. I mean, if, if you wanted to just push out Winget, you know, if you wanted to use, a command line to run winget and install things that way you could but there's no like with sccm you could download like the offline packages and then deploy apps that way right. uh, but but now you have no capability of doing that you you can't download like an offline company portal for instance um so we're, we're looking at solutions there but there's nothing that we can comment on right now and kevin's making that comment too about winget's user context as far as he knows. Do you know if it's user or system? Mm, 
I haven't tried. Robert says we can get Cumbi used to the system. I, I believe they just recently added, as when I say recently, in the last six months, um, yeah. maybe as long as a year, they added a switch, a command line switch to actually tell you whether to be user or system context. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I've, I haven't I haven't tried pushing anything scope through Winget. I think that's right. I think it used to default to whatever it was defined as, and you kind of had to hope. But I think they now added <laughs> you to override it. What will you get? <laughs> oh yeah, there's some there's some good going on. You know what? We'll we'll take it back and uh, we'll post in the. Maybe we'll do a community questions post around this and we'll figure it out for certain. Good question, Kevin. What else? All right, I'll call it um, open Q&A for anything else related to endpoint management and Zoom. Anything going on that you're seeing that we need to be aware of? Feel free to come off mute too. Scott, Scott you don't have to raise your hand, Scott. Well, yeah, I was being polite. Um, <laughs> I did want to make an announcement that uh, we had announced that we were going to be doing our session on Mac OS management in Intune on the 29th of August. So we've just got our speaker secured, so we'll send more information, but mark September 12th on your calendar. And we September will have, 12th. yep, and we will be sending more information out about that. And <clears throat> also invite your peers uh, that might be Mac OS managers in your organizations. If you don't, if you're not in charge of that, if it's another individual, uh, have them come to that session as well. We'd like to, um, and uh, it promises to be a, a really good session. So put that one definitely on your calendar. Yeah, we're sorry about the delay on that one, but the PM who's joining us um, is working around his schedule and we're just grateful he's gonna make the time. So September 12th, mark your calendars, pass it to a friend. Great update, Scott, thanks. Um, let's see, is it Alex? Is Alex's hand raised? Alex, do you wanna come off mute? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. What you got? Um, yeah, so I was wondering with the uh, application control stuff and the managed installer, how exactly that is tagging stuff. Like if you're using PowerShell scripts in there and doing custom installs, like not just calling the executable or MSI, but copying files or dropping things in different places. Yeah, so when... When you've configured managed installer, um, what will happen is if you set, you have to specify what your managed installer is going to be. So in, in what we've released recently, um, we basically created a, an, an app blocker policy that um, even though Defender Application Control is what controls managed installer, um, app blocker is actually there's an XML file that gets configured that you basically say this ex whatever executable you want to be managed installer is going to be the managed installer. And so in this case, we use the Intune Management Extension. So what that does is that anything that the Intune Management Extension uh, deploys, um, it there's a file attribute. It's actually an extended attribute or an EA. Um, that extended attribute is uh, tagged on each file that the Intune Management Extension is laying down on the device. Um, and so anything that you deploy through Intune will get tagged with that file. Now, if an application updates itself, so let's look at Google Chrome as, as an example. Uh, Chrome, well, Chrome.exe will have the extended attribute laid down. So when it runs, the OS will say, hey, you're, you're okay to, to run because we see the extended attribute that in the Intune Management Extension laid down. But when Chrome needs to update, um, the update mechanism isn't Chrome.exe, it's Google Update.exe. Well, Google Update.exe is not a managed installer. So Google Update.exe will attempt to run 
and download the latest release of Chrome and try to install, and then that will fail. Because the files that have been laid down are not managed installers. They're just allowed to execute because IME, or the Internet Management Center, is what laid them down. Um, and so if you're exploring the, the use case of using managed installer, um, I would be very cautious and also really make sure that you understand what your applications are doing. Because oftentimes we don't actually know what an app does. We'll push it out, but we may not know that that application is reaching out to the internet to grab additional files to complete its own installation. And so what we've seen with managed installer, and, and, when, and we actually did a lot of this work with Windows 11 SE, um, was that when we deployed managed installer out, we found that at least in K-12 education, and higher ed is gonna be a little bit different, but at least in K-12, we found a lot of applications, particularly testing applications, um, they, they function more like, like a wrapper where the application itself gets laid down, but then they reach out to the internet, they download a number of files, and then they may use additional applications to extract those files. So like you could have 7-zip, for instance, where it would, you, you know, you, you have an application like a, like a testing app. So I, actually, if, if you look at TestNab, for instance, is a K-12 testing app here in the US, that application will reach out and it'll grab uh, compressed, so it'll, compressed files that are compressed in the 7-zip format. And it will then try to, to extract those files using 7-zip, but it'll fail. Yet the application itself will look like it's installed successfully to, act, to Intune. It'll actually report back successful install. But when you actually use the app, you get an error message on screen. And then when you look at the event log, you'll actually see, oh, this is actually going out and downloading other things and trying to execute and what it's executing on is failing because TestNav is not a managed installer. And so we see this across the board, not just with testing apps, but uh, tons of apps out there. Um, and so going back to my point, you really need to understand your application stack that you're trying to use this in. Um, because if you don't understand your apps, you're going to have a tough time um, because you're going to be deploying things out and Intune might say, hey, this is working great. Your end user, though, might be like, hey, this application's like half working. Like it looks like it's here, but when I run it, I'm just getting error messages. Um, so very particular use cases here when, when it comes to using managed installer. Okay, is is there another solution? Because I know we had, we had app blocker policies for years and uh, mm -hmm. looking at it, it's blocking exe msi dll um yep so anything pushed out i realize anything that i'm pushing out user context whether it's a script or um, software is failing it's not installing OneDrive um, to each user profile it's not running any of the scripts i have even the store apps won't install user context are are you talking about so did, did did you deploy managed installer and the and the WDAC policy and now you're seeing stuff's not working? No, no. I I just enabled managed installer so we could start tagging stuff so I can test it out. Um, okay. we had uh whoever was doing it before had custom OMA app locker policies. Okay, so so well, you're saying things aren't running in that user context. I'm trying to understand is it is it because you've been, it, it, did this only happen after the managed installer stuff or has this been happening with your app blocker policy? Oh yeah, it's been happening with the app blocker policy. That's why I was wondering, okay. I've been trying to figure out how the application, like whether that would be a good replacement. Oh yeah, no, that, that, that's gonna be probably not much better. What, what, what are you trying to solve for right now? Is it you're just trying to prevent people from being able to install things? Um, yeah, prevent them from being able to install things, running uh, a little chromium.exe that lets them get around a lot of our filtering stuff. Okay. Uh, were you in this, were you in our session last time, last, uh, last two weeks ago? No, I missed that one. Okay, so two weeks ago, I basically went over this exact topic. Um, you can watch the recording on that, but effectively what... Uh, what we had talked about that time was leveraging something called Windows Smart Screen to prevent um, 
it was primarily for K-12, but you could do this in any, you know, anyone can do this. It doesn't have to be for K-12, but to prevent people from installing applications that they download from the internet. So oftentimes we see like students will go download Chrome or Firefox or some third party browser, uh, Discord, TikTok, whatever. Um, and all these applications can install in the user's profile without, so you might remove their admin rights, their standard users, yet they can still install these things because the applications will attempt to install the program files that'll fail because they're standard users. And then it'll just install directly to their app data folder in their local profile. Um, and so last in our last session, we actually went all through um, A, what that user experience looks like, um, but B, then how, how to go about configuring it. Um, so I recommend going and check that out because um, I think that's, that's well, an so easier, we yeah, it's, we had it's issues easier. where they had like the self-contained executables. It wasn't installing; they were just dropping. They would the just run from a flash drive on there and run it. It would open up a browser. Um, they would be some flavor of Chromium um, that it didn't need to install. They just ran it straight from the bottom. Yeah, th th this is the same thing though. Because think of something. I don't know if you've ever dealt with like Siphon, the si Siphon 3, it's the VPN thing that a lot of kids use to get around content filters. Um, in that demo, I, I don't know if in, in that demo I actually showed it, but Siphon doesn't- You, you highlighted it. Yeah, it, it actually doesn't install. It, it's, it's a portable executable, so it's a PE. Um, and the same, same exact experience. It won't let you run it um, because, because of the smart, or the, the smart screen policies that are actually implemented in the OS. Um, so I yeah. I checked that out. It's it's a it's less heavy handed than both AppLocker and and um, Windows Defender Application Control with Managed Installer. Um, using those two methods are it's you're playing the AppLocker whack-a-mole game that I like to call it, um, where you're never going to get ahead. There's always going to be another app that you're going to have to add to that list, and your XML file just ends up miles long. Or you go and take a block list approach, right, and block everything except a whitelist, which then you have to manage as well. Either way, you're yeah, managing that, way too much. Yeah, and that's what we have right now. And yeah, that's yeah. It's so yeah, watch the session I did last time. Um, that should make your life easier. Um, and let me know if you run into any any issues or if there's any problems that you see with it. Um, because that's what we, we, we've been using it at a few different larger districts here in the US. Um, and we're finding that uh, for the most part, um, you know, there, there really aren't any students that are installing or doing things that they, should, that they shouldn't be doing, so. Yeah, Alex, I linked to that session in the comments uh, or in the chat, so feel free to look that up and anyone else on the call. That whole session actually, Richard, it was a longer session because we reviewed all best practices for student deployments um, and recommended policies to deploy and things like that. So there was a good chunk of chunk of time spent on the yeah. app uh, management section. So check it out. Let's see what else. We probably have time for one more quick question. Is there anything else? <clears throat> Siphon. Yeah. Right yep. That's it. Siphon's been around for a, a while too. Did you have to fight I that? Know when, when you I had to, to fight that, yeah. When I was at my district, I, I fought that battle. Yeah. And and it's interesting, right? Because you have to fight it across all platforms. It's not just Windows. So Yeah. I, I can't help you with the other platforms. I'll help you with Windows, but yeah. Someone else can do. All right. Um, well, if there are no more questions, um, Carlos, thank you so much for coming on and, and giving us the spiel around what's coming and what we need to look out for for the Windows update uh, or the store for education and the updates to that. We really appreciate that. Um, make sure that you all are, um, you've got the right invite link. I'm going to throw it in the chat again one more time so that you all have it. I think I solved my Outlook issues of getting that ICS out. So if, you are a part of the team. Um, you should have gotten a reminder email about this session uh, yesterday morning. That should have the latest and greatest ICS that you can share out with your friends and get them to register. And in a couple of weeks, we'll, we have to pivot. We've got to find an, another session um, to cover. So we'll keep you posted on what we've got, but we will be meeting 
um, next, well, in two weeks. So that's, I think, the 29th. Is that right? Um, 29th. And then on September 12th, again, we'll have the Apple Mac management session with um, some of the product groups. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, as always, there is the ongoing community questions channel. Uh, make sure that you're using that and interacting. Um, go watch the recordings on YouTube. We'll get this recording posted momentarily, and we will go from there. Ooh, Randall has a good question. Whose school year has already started? Uh, Los Angeles Unified School District started this week. A bunch of districts in Texas start this week. Florida's back. Dallas oh, started. T minus two days. Dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the law and order. Game time. That's what I. Simi Valley started last week. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, for those of y'all who are gearing up for the new school year, um, good luck. We're here. The whole community is here. So use that community's questions channel if y'all run into things let us know what's going on we'll continue to keep you posted and we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks yep. thanks again carlos scott everyone have a great Good. rest of your day thanks everyone bye, -bye.